With Kai Havertz through the door for £65 million and £105 million star Declan Rice following him imminently, Mikel Arteta's dream midfield trio is almost complete. It would have taken an ambitious betting man or woman to predict that is how Arsenal's engine room would look next season, but it is very close to becoming a reality. A havertz rice Odegaard partnership boasts attacking flair, technical quality and defensive noose, though they may struggle to match the physical output of certain rivals. Interestingly, Havertz's stats were better when he lined up in midfield for Chelsea, suggesting he could offer a great counterpoint to his teammates but how do the three players stack up to the likes of Man City, Man United, Liverpool, Tottenham and Newcastle's trios? Arsenal are set to place Havertz on the left-hand side of an exciting, new-look midfield three next season, with Rice as the deep-lying number six and Captain Odegaard on the other side as a number eight. Odegaard, the only of the three who was at the club last campaign, will reprise the right-sided role he excelled in during the 2022-23 season. Rice, meanwhile, will mainly play as the deepest and most central of the three, with both Odegaard and Havertz on either side of him. That, too, will be a slight adaptation from his previous club, where he played as a double pivot next to Tomas Sosik in West Ham's 4-2-3-1. He very often had a partner in crime next to him helping to break up play and stifle the opposition's midfield, but may be expected to do the bulk of the work alone if Havertz and Odegaard are marauding upfield. Even for England, who largely play 4-3-3, he has defensive support from the likes of Jude Bellingham, Calvin Phillips and Jordan Henderson. Havertz is a demonic, frenzied and willing presser but his off-the-ball work and positioning in defensive terms will need a lot of practice and coaching. Luckily, that is something Arteta is clearly sure he can provide. Versatile attacker Havertz is perhaps best as a central-ish number 10 but largely played as a central striker for Chelsea, mainly due to their crisis of orthodox number 9s. Despite this, Arteta evidently sees him, not more natural midfielder Rice, as the right replacement for vice-captain Granit Xhaka, who is expected to leave this summer as he enters the last year of his contract. In the club's official announcement, he said, Kai is a player of top quality. He has great versatility and is an intelligent player. He will bring a huge amount of extra strength to our midfield and variety to our play, laying bare his plans for him. The Spaniard believes the gifted ball carrier will thrive in their dynamic and fluid possession-based style, making darting late runs into the penalty area to get goals and assists and leaving space behind him for left-back Alexander Zinchenko to fill. Arteta is understood to feel Havertz's new role will suit his preferred 3-2-5 attacking shape, which is reminiscent of how he was at times used during his blistering spell at Bayer Leverkusen. Back in 2021, the then Chelsea man said, More or less, I'm a midfield player but I like to go into the box. Arsenal will hope, Cobra Kai, can strike teams from deep as Shaka did last season, in by far the best goalscoring season of his whole career, with 9. Of course, he can and will cover elsewhere up front for Gabriel Jesus, as a right-sided number 8, perhaps as a wideman, in the same way Leandro Trossard can cover multiple positions, but this is how Arsenal envisage he will be used. Plus, given that teams will be more and more likely to line up in a low block against them, Havertz's off-the-ball movement will help break sides down, while his aerial ability will prove a valuable asset at set pieces, which Arsenal excelled in last season. After all, Havertz was labeled Aleskaner, during his time in Germany, roughly meaning, jack of all trades, because of his tactical understanding and positional versatility. He played in central midfield for former club Bayer Leverkusen and also played there on occasion for Chelsea in winter 2020. Though it's a very small sample size, Chelsea's record in those games was generally positive. A 4-0 Champions League win away at Krasnodar, a 3-0 win at Burnley, a 4-0 win away at Sevilla, a 3-1 win against Leeds and a 2-1 defeat at Wolves, though he was substituted off before Pedro Nito's late winner at Molino. What do the stats say? Looking at statistics from last season offers some interesting insight, for example, showing Odegaard is excellent going forward. Among midfielders who played at least 60% of Premier League games last season, he ranks second for goals, 15, third for expected assists, 7.95, eighth for assists, 7, and fifth for key passes per game, 2.08. While via the same metric, Rice tops the league in terms of interceptions per game, 1.70, and ball recoveries per game, 9.03, demonstrating his anticipation and positioning. 
He also ranks ninth for passing accuracy, with 88%. Havertz, with his tricks, flicks, languid running style and graceful, elegant movement, has always been a player that transcends the cold, hard black and white of statistics. You can't, for example, really reduce a bolidic turn or a beautifully weighted touch or movement that opens up space for a teammate to score to just a number. That said, he does rank highly for some stats. The Athletic point out that only City's monstrous striker Erling Haaland made more off-the-ball runs into the opposition's penalty area than Havertz in the league last campaign, with 349 to 334. And only Tottenham's son Hung Min, 1093, made more off-ball runs than the 37-cap international, 1070, among all wingers and strikers. And the data shows he actually ranks higher for shots, key passes, successful dribbles per 90 minutes and goal conversion rate when playing in midfield for Chelsea. Broadly, though, Havertz is a player of the intangibles. Arsenal see him as the one who will draw markers away and create space for others, someone who can create opportunities out of nothing, someone who can make things happen. He could be the perfect foil alongside Odegaard's creativity and Raya's defensive ability, delivering a lovely balance to their midfield, though doubts remain over whether they could avoid being bullied by more physically dominant sides. They would lose some of that without Thomas Partey.